Hello viewers, welcome to an another episode of KYT Know Your Town. Today we are going to talk about our eyes because of late we have been using our eyes a lot. Uh, we have been consuming lot of data on our phone as well. If you ask me as statistics, then an average Indian is consuming about more than 12 GB data every month. So that is our immense uh, screen consumption. What we are doing currently. If you ask me, children, then even children have started taking their online classes on computers, on laptops. Senior citizens are using phones to watch their movies and serials. So overall, a lot of screen consumption is happening right from the pandemic, which began in the March. So when we are using eyes that much, so it obviously has to have a lot of adverse effects on our eyes, and we need to take a lot of precaution, a lot of safety measures, so that. we can protect our eyes in future and for that uh, we have invited dr chandrashekar bavikar who is a leading ophthalmologist of maharashtra to talk about the health of our eyes first of all doctor we welcome you to the kyt episode show thank you uh dr bavikar uh, runs a bavikar institute in thane for last 32 years he was recently even bestowed with thane gaurav puraskar by thane municipal corporation and he's a expert in this field so we would ask him uh, doctor as we uh, as you must have heard uh, we are showing lot of concern about our eyes so how is this computer screen actually affecting our eyes can you elaborate uh, nikhil this is a very very important topic uh, see what happens is that computers do harm our eyes and that is called as computer vision syndrome now if you see in front of the eye there is a tear film okay which not only protects the eye but it also gives a pure very high quality refractive surface because of which we get such crisp vision now any problem with this tear film will lead to some kind of disease or discomfort and when it happens because of working on computer we call it computer vision syndrome what is the difference between normal print and uh, computer screen print normal print the letters are fixed whereas on the computer screen the letters are continuously flickering now because of that the eyes do not know exactly where to focus they keep on losing focus and as a result of that they stare more often or for a, like they have to work harder now because of this there is fatigue to the eyes and because of this the blinking decreases and blinking is very essential for maintaining good quality of tear film in front of the eyes see tear film is vertical and it has to be replenished every few seconds by blinking now once you stop blinking problem start so in short uh, this is what is computer vision syndrome okay uh, what measures one can take to protect our eyes because this has become unavoidable now yeah uh, let me share my screen with you so that uh, you will understand uh, what are the measures to be taken can you see the presentation yes to make it simple for people i have devised the acronym and that is a uh, brighter led so these are the do's and don'ts of computer vision syndrome let us look at this each of these alphabets of brighter led so we start with b b is blinking so normal blinking rate is around 12 to 14 per uh, minute so during computer work we stop blinking or decrease blinking and frequent blinking that means voluntarily you have to keep a watch on your blinking is the b, b of the brighter led then r reflections if you see this picture the tube light is getting reflected here whereas if you see there is a dull reflection in the small picture next to that both these reflections are equally troublesome to the eye then b r i improve the contrast and text edge now what is the text edge in an attempt to uh, see more 
people have a tendency to decrease the tax there on the contrary what we should do is we should increase the tax size minimum tax size recommended is at least 12 font size okay and then look at these four types of uh, letters the topmost has got the best uh, contrast because it is black and black on white whereas the low, uh, the third one has got the least contrast and this con this is going to be troublesome now the last one has got good contrast that is the uh black again it is black but the background is very busy again this is going to cause you know excess uh, work for the eyes so we choose the font size and text size properly then b r i g g okay g stands for glare so whenever people are working in a atmosphere office like this where they are exposed to the exterior or you can see this table you can see you can see the arrow i suppose hmm. you can see the arrow right yeah yeah so, uh, you, uh, this glare what you can see this glare is going to give problem to the eyes we may not realize it is subtle but somebody is working there for 8 hours definitely is going to suffer then mm -hmm. h h is halt breaks so we have to take breaks say after one hour uh, at least a few minutes break it should not be such a big break that people will start cursing me or your bosses will start cursing me but the break has to be like 2 minutes 3 minutes you can call it a bio break or whatever and uh, come back to work that will definitely give you know eyes a little rest which is very much desired then improving the tears so drink plenty of water these are the excellent sources which are of fatty acids which are essential for formation of tears flax seeds fish oil almond etc then fr uh, fresh fruits and vegetables okay especially which give vitamin a and a very very important now we are also understanding that vitamin d also plays a very important part so uh, going out for a morning walk in the sunlight is very important and if that is not possible at least take some vitamin uh, d supplement uh, most important thing to understand is that vitamin d if you are taking in excess can cause overdose so just be aware about what you are doing about it right too much of meat uh, fats or carbohydrates that means imbalanced diet can cause problems so we have finished b r i g h t then let's go to e now uh, there are many times people are saying that anti reflective coating and anti glare coating is important for glasses but believe me nikhil this is all not of any use to our eyes okay. if we avoid glare and reflection from the computer screen dot whatever i already covered you do not require anti reflective and anti glare coating on the eyes anti reflective coating is probably useful when we are driving at night and anti glare coating is basically useful for people who go out in the snow okay or they are working in a situation where there is too much of glare like for example somebody is working on a construction site where the facade is of glass or of aluminum where there is too much of reflection of light but okay. not uh, not certainly for computer now but what you need to do is proper refraction refraction means power of glasses so type of glasses is not all that important getting correct power of glasses is important after the age of 40 progressive glasses are important now typically you have seen that people have bifocal glasses that means the upper part is for distance and the lower part is for reading and you can see a circle uh, in the glasses but computer uh, screen is at such a distance neither reading nor distance so what we require is progressive glasses that means the power decreases continuously from top to bottom and you can focus on points from distance gradually to near at one point of time you can see you can focus on the computer screen so after the age of 40 if you are working on a computer more than 3 hours per day progressive glasses are important then we go to um, we have finished brighter then light led brighter led l is ambient light now see this office i have chosen this uh, diagram very carefully just see the amount of light there is no too much of dazzle we require low light for working atmosphere because that is far more soothing to the eyes similarly where is the source of the light it should neither be behind you okay uh, because it will reflect on the screen it should not be uh, behind the computer because it will cause glare it can be on the sides but best is It, if it is directly on top 
okay so it is throwing adequate light on your uh, keyboard and not adequate, not too much light on your eyes as well as on the screen then we go to e exercise exercise i exercise is very simple what you have to do is that you have to re relax the muscles of the eye how do you do that you keep on looking at a uh, something which is very close by then intermediate distance and far off distance and then far off distance intermediate distance and close distance and this just you keep on repeating for about 5 minutes every few hours and that kind of exercise is good enough for it to give enough relaxation to the eye so when you take a break okay once in a while uh, you can do this exercise then we go to display uh, now uh, display you will see that the oldest is the cathode ray tube that is a crt monitor now a lot of people are not using this but this is like really bad for the eyes from then we went to led screen uh, which is definitely superior and then now we are going to plasma screen which is even better but what you need to do you have to improve the flicker rate the resolution uh, the color uh, pixelates uh, etc everything has to, and the display everything has to be of highest quality if you go to youtube or google there is adequate information on what kind of flicker rate or what kind of pixel rate or what kind of resolution you require for for your eyes and this is like you know i shown a pathway here how to go i'm sorry uh, this is like pathway i have shown here how to go to refresh rate uh, but i'm sure computer experts don't require my advice on how to search for adjusting their refresh rate or uh, flicker rate or you know the display resolution color etc so uh, that uh, finishes like you know the brighter led now i'll now i'll stop sharing the screen and we can again share for another slide if required uh, doctor thanks for this presentation even i was checking whether my laptop is in the right position whether the glare is not coming and all and whether, and uh, even i'll practice that exercise which you have just suggested uh i am concerned yes. about senior citizens and children because we all are discussing about them because earlier we never used to take online classes that much on laptop or on computers but now children are sitting for 3 3 hours 4 hours even for 6 hours also so how many hours it is advisable for them to sit what prevention they should take one from the children point of view and what would you tell about the senior citizens yeah again uh, this is a very very important area and we need to cover it in a little bit of detail see when i say computer vision syndrome it means every screen okay whether you're going for a movie home theater uh, tv laptop mobile tablet everything now uh, but what happens is that tv is causing comparatively lesser damage than the other okay uh of course it does not mean tv is safe from this point of view uh but i am saying comparison wise now if you see the amount of screen time which is advisable for children it is so low that uh probably we will have to stop taking classes for them and same thing applies for uh, adults so what we should do is that we should not the screen should not be used for gaming purposes and like you know uh, suppose like somebody is busy so you give him a laptop and so his attention is drawn towards the laptop the child's attention is uh, drawn towards the laptop and you keep him busy so we should not use screen for such purposes either they are becoming you know gaming addict or they are like you know using it we are using for our convenience but otherwise let them use uh in both the extremes of life that means the children and uh, the senior citizen the eyes are delicate and senior citizen they already have some inert amount of dryness and this is going to increase the dryness so what they have to do is that they have to take more breaks in between and now again coming back to children same rule applies that suppose somebody has, suppose your uh, your son has two hours online after that ensure that for at least one hour he does some activity where his eyes are focused at distance but not on tv even if we like 
kind of rationalize uh, the use of computer that should work uh, quite uh, comfortably for everybody okay um doctor what about the posture like how the posture should, should be while we, when we are consuming the screen yes uh, again another important question uh, let me share my screen for that uh, okay can you see the uh, slide now yes okay now see the best posture okay for uh, good uh, for a good part of uh, for the body the best posture for the body is either primary posture or the way shri shirdi sai baba sits okay with the one leg crossed on the other side so th these two are very very relaxing postures but it is uh, in that second posture it is not possible to work on computer so we have to sit on primary posture now what do you mean by primary posture uh let us look at it uh, this diagram so first thing is that your back has to be absolutely straight yeah so the first thing is that you know your back has to be absolutely straight okay if you are bending forward or backward that will not do that will going to give you back ache after some time second thing is that the neck also has to be straight and for the necks to be straight the computer has to be directly in front of your eyes okay not on right side or one uh, left side and the top part of the screen okay should be at an angle of at an angle such as the top part of the screen should not be at the level of the eyes like this but rather it should be somewhat like this okay so Uh, that will help now now in this diagram if you see uh, the uh, the computer screen is downwards like that so that is a better situation and that will ensure that the neck is placed properly then the you see in this posture there is a gap between the back of the chair and this fellow's uh, butt this is a wrong posture we have to sit right into the seat the way this person is sitting okay that will ensure that the curvature of the chair fits with the curvature of the back okay and the patient uh, the person is continuously relaxed then the next point is that your wrist should not be touching the uh, anything for anything for support when you are typing when you are not typing they can be touching the moment you start typing they should be floating in the air then the next point is see this is posture is hip joint and knee joint are almost in the same uh, straight line or maybe the knee joint is slightly up this will definitely give him arthritis but the knee joint and hip joint the relation should be such that like, like this the knee joint should be at a slightly lower level than the hip joint i hope you understand that this is a knee joint and this is a hip joint so knee joint should be at a slightly lower level than the hip joint then you see his feet feet they are not touching the ground now this way he is going to get uh, spasm here okay they should be properly touching on the ground and therefore you can adjust the height of the chair okay because of which he will be he'll be uh, touching on the ground so if you maintain such posture see remember that when i'm uh, when my face is like this the tears are in the best format the moment i bend like this or like this like you know like i had gone to one bank where i saw that the monitor is right into the desktop it looks good from convenience point of view but all those people are more liable to get computer vision syndrome so you your hair face has to be like this only and the neck head back everything has to be vertical then only people are going to get uh, much less orthopedic problem or safer from the orthopedic problem and consequently they are also going to get much less computer vision syndrome also uh, could you see the diagrams i was drawing yes 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 yeah yeah thank you let's go ahead 
doctor again a very useful presentation even i was checking my legs uh, my feet and my feet were not touching the ground so i immediately touched them on the ground so i think even viewers will find this information very useful uh, and people are more inquisitive to know more about their eyes they are more cautious about their eyes so they would like to find such information at a, at a regular intervals so what is the authentic source of getting such information okay so yeah. uh you can see the slide right yeah so uh if people have more queries they can write a email to us on contacted@vavikarai.com and we'll be very happy to uh, share a pdf document of the same and if co of course if they have any eye problems uh, they can always visit us or any other eye surgeon uh, thank you so much doctor for giving us time it was really a very useful and valuable information which you shared uh, viewers i hope uh, you got lot of uh, inputs from this interview and if you have liked the interview then please like share and subscribe this channel thank you so much doctor once again for joining us thank you